Welcome friends. For those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. And today's project is actually more born out of need than it is artistic. <laughs> I have gotten to this place where I have all these cords that I need for charging different items and I needed a way to keep those cords neat and tidy and together in one spot. So um, I came up with these little pouches and this particular one is um, a three compartment pouch where you see the colors change, that's where they, it's sewn together making a pouch um, or a compartment. So I've got um, my earbuds in there, and I've got one of my um, iPad charger in there, and then, oh, anyway, I got lots of, I got all my different chargers that I need um, neatly stored in here. And I, I opted to do the little compartments just because uh, that helps to keep the cords neat. If I kept this all open together, they would get kind of tangled up and I, and I was trying to avoid any kind of tangling. This was actually my first pouch. And then I kind of went to town on this. <laughs> but um, decided, you know, you can do single pouches. Um, if you And I did this in different colors, different, a little bit different sizing. This one is um, a smaller one and it, it doesn't have the little tab on it, but they're all lined. And then I also have um, a two compartment pouch. And this one's done in just a solid fabric. And again, this one, you know, it's lined as well. This is the um, project for today. These would actually make really great Christmas gifts. Everybody has cords and everyone's trying to figure out ways to keep those cords neat and tidy and together in one place. It's a fun little personalized gift that you can make for somebody that's in your life. And just real quick, I um, want to encourage you all to um, head over to Facebook. If you are a Facebook member, look for Heidi Creates 1965. That is my Facebook page. And there is a great way for us to share um, what we're making, um, ask questions, and yeah, just have a good time encouraging one another in our creativity. Let's get to our project and we'll see you on the other side. When making these pouches, you have some decisions to make. One of the decisions is to decide how many pouches or compartments you want to your bag. Do you want it to be a one compartment pouch? Do you want a two compartment pouch? Or a three compartment pouch? The next decision is if you decide to do two or more compartments to your bag, do you want them, the outside fabric, to be all the same fabric? Or do you want your bag to have each compartment be its own separate piece? And I haven't done this, but I mean, you could have the front side, every one of the front sides and every one of the back sides, you know, completely uh, different pieces. You could use it fabric scraps for this particular project. For this tutorial, I'm going to be doing this two compartment pouch. Down below in the description of this video, you will find all the measurements that you need for making either the different panels or for making the solid panel on the outside main fabric. I did lose some footage, um, so I needed to do a retake, and so you're going to see some different fabric in this particular clip. But once you have all your pieces cut, the first thing that you need to do is actually take your lining fabric and your interfacing put the sticky side of the interfacing to the wrong side of your lining and press those together. The next step is to sew together your panels for your outside main fabric. Now if you've decided to use a single fabric on the outside then you can skip this step. Otherwise take the pieces that you have decided on and in the arrangement that you have decided on, you're going to sew them together, being sure to sew together the short side of the rectangle. So in this instance, it'd be the four and three quarter inch side. That's the side you're going to sew together using a quarter inch seam allowance. 
I've sewn both panels together and I've pressed the seam allowances um, to the darker fabric side. The next step is to take your fabric panels for the, out, the outside fabric and align the edges to those pieces of foam you've cut. I like to at least do the four corners. This, this can shift on you. Um, so I will clip these to the corners and then show you how I sew these. I've increased my stitch length to 3.0 and I'm going to do an eighth inch uh, basting seam around the edges attaching the fabric to the foam. Now as I'm sewing, I'm compressing the foam in front of the foot. And it really stays compressed for a while. Once you've compressed it, it stays down for a while. So you can move along as you're sewing. That just helps keep everything on track, makes it easier to sew on the foam. And that's just something that's helped me and um, thought I'd share that and just in case it might help you too. One of the things you can do is kind of pull and stretch the fabric a little bit to even fit the foam even better, keeping it nice and taut. But I'm going to go ahead and finish all the way around this one and then the other one and, and we'll go to the next step after that. After the foam has been sewn on to the front and back sides, um, now is time to attach the zipper. And I haven't talked about that, but this project, you know, is ten and a half inches long. and the zipper I have here is a 15 inch zipper and um, if you haven't done much with zippers it's really nice to have a zipper that's oversized just because um, you you can zip the pull out of the way while you're sewing it on. It just makes it very easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the front side of the zipper, it's the side with the pull on it, and I'm going to face that down on top of my one of my fabric panels for the outside. And I'm just going to position that how I want that right sides together. Take one of the lining pieces and then I'm going to take the right side of it to face down, facing right sides together of the lining and the outside panel. And I'm going to align the top edges and also the short edges together making sure they're completely plumb with one another. Just lift up the clips or pins, whatever you're using, that you've put there previously to attach the outside panel. You can put a zipper foot in if you like. I don't like to use the zipper foot. Um, but I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm going to stitch using a 2.5 inch stitch length. Also, if I haven't mentioned already, I am using a 9014 needle and all-purpose polyester thread for this project. Before you sew your zippers on, after you get them clipped, what you want to do is you want to mark a half an inch in from the end. Because you're not going to sew on this part, that one half inch. You're going to sew between the two half inch lines. So on either end where you're going to be sewing the zipper on, mark at half an inch. While you're sewing the zipper on, you can actually compress the foam as you're sewing it again just to make it easier to stay on track. Once you have that side of the zipper sewn on, I'm going to take both sides, fold them back, and press. Going to sew the second side on, just like we did the first side, making sure that um, my preference is to have the two colors matching. And so once I line up the side edges, the top edges, I'll make sure that it's actually aligning my seams in here as well. I'll go ahead and get that aligned. I got the second outside panel uh, clipped on and their right sides are facing. I'm going to flip it over now and right sides facing. But at the top edge of the zipper, I'm going to attach the second side. Just aligning all the edges, sides, and top, and then just removing the clips and putting this in as I get to each clip, and then I'll come back. I marked a half an inch from both ends. I'm going to sew now a quarter inch seam allowance from that mark to this mark. I went ahead and pressed open that second side as well, um, both sides away from the zipper. So I have now marked 
both sides of the zipper and a half an inch away from the end. You can see right there in red, there's those two marks. Down here I had to use chalk because this is a darker fabric, but I marked those as well, half an inch away from this end down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch all along the zipper on these two panels over here, just eighth of an inch away from the seam. And I'm going to lengthen my stitch to 3.0 Again, not sewing in those areas half of an inch from the end. One of the things is you want to make sure that your lining underneath is pulled flush with this edge here. You want to make sure those are nice and lined up. And then also you can compress the foam again while you're doing this top stitching just to make it a little easier. Since I just got done uh, top stitching, I'm going to go ahead and take care of the tab that goes on the side of the bag. What I did with this, you know, it's two inches wide. I folded it in half lengthwise to make a center crease. Then I folded both edges into that center crease and then folded in half again and then pressed that really good. And then what I'm going to do now is go ahead and use that top stitch length of 3.0 and top stitch both an eighth of an inch away from the edge on both sides of the strip. At this point you can fold your tab in half and then if you need to go right, it, feel, feel free to stitch across this just to hold this tab um, lined up, folded in half. I'm not going to bother with that, but what you're going to do next is on the end where your zipper pull is, when your bag is closed, that's, where you, that's the end that you're going to actually install the tab. And you're going to do the folded side on the inside of the panel with the cut ends hanging outside the bag here. And I come down, I don't really measure it, just the top edge is maybe about an inch away from the top of the bag. And you can leave however much you want. I think I do about an inch and a quarter of the actual tab that's um, inside the bag. And just remember there will be a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so that'll also make it shorter, but an, an inch is about the right amount hanging out. And um, I'm just going to clip that real quick like that. It's time to sew it together. And so we're going to actually take the um, out, two outside panels and fold them together over the zipper. And one thing we need to make sure that we do is open that zipper almost all the way. <laughs> but we're going to bring the two edges of the fabric up together, leaving the interfacing facing down. And we're going to line up the top edges and the side edges and clip these together. And again, I'm just going to make sure that seam between the two panels are lined up as well. Clip that. And then I'm going to go ahead and clip all the way around the bag. I've clipped the main outside panels together and now I'm just going to bring the lining together right sides just like we did the um, outside panels. I'm going to clip that together as well. On the bottom I've marked the fabric with a about a four inch opening or four inch space there just that's for turning this once we have this all sewn together. But I'm going to go ahead and clip all the edges together for this lining as well. And this next part is very important. Um, I'm doing mine bag just differently than a lot of people do theirs. On each side of this zipper we're going to mark the foam side and the interfacing side a half an inch away from that seam allowance. So go ahead mark down away from the edge that's sewn you know over there which is the seam allowance and let's really I should get that down there a little bit more. And then I'll do the same thing on this side as well. There's my seam allowance. And then I'll measure this half inch away. And I'll do that on the other end as well. I just want to show you how I'm going to sew this. Explain it first before I show you on the machine. Um, so at each, I've marked here one half of an inch away from the seam allowance that sews that to the zipper. So I'm going to begin sewing on this edge a half an inch away from this end up here and I'm going to make it a quarter of an inch seam allowance. As I'm making my way to the corner down here, I'm going to increase my seam allowance to three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to turn, keeping that three-eighths of an inch seam allowance until I get to my mark here. I'm going to jump this spot, come down here again with the three-eighths of an inch seam allowance, sew here to the corner turn, 
and from this corner to my mark, I'm going to decrease from the 3 8 inch to the quarter inch. By the time I'm at the mark, I'm at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once I've done that, then I'm going to go ahead and sew the main outside panel together. Pretty much in the same manner, but I'm just going to keep a quarter inch seam allowance the whole way around. Starting from the half inch mark here, going down around the bottom and up to that half inch mark. Okay, I'm starting at the half inch mark with a quarter of an inch seam allowance to begin. I'm going to back tack. Now I'm increasing my stitch width, my, excuse me, my seam allowance to 3 8 of an inch, and that's where I have it at right now. Put my needle down, lift foot, turn my work. And this is actually, and I have it go back one more stitch. There we go. Continue with the 3 8 inch seam allowance until I get to my first mark. When I get to my mark, back stitch, lift my foot. And I'm just going to jump down to this edge where the other mark is. Making sure my bag three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Make sure I know where my mark is. Reverse my stitch. Keep the three eighths inch seam allowance all the way to the corner. Pivot. Now, between this corner and my mark up here on this edge, I'm going to decrease my stitch to one quarter of an inch seam allowance. And now I've reached one quarter inch seam allowance. Back tacking. I'm going to jump over now to the main panel side and I have to fiddle a little bit to get this on here just because of the foam makes it so thick. All right, and again on this side we're going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Once I've sewn over this tab, I'm going to backtrack over it and then come back over it again. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and finish going the uh, quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the main bag. I have the outside panel and the lining panel sewn together, right sides together. I haven't turned yet because I want to show you what we're going to do with the ends. If you look at the ends, this is the lining side and this is the uh, main panel, outside panel side. When you look where they come together at, their, at the zipper, you'll see that this is apart because we left the half inch um, ends. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually fold the lining and the main fabric we're going to lay together and with the zipper just like we did it before laying towards the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to now lay that down and you can see the stitch from the side here and where we stopped. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to sew and we don't want to sew. If you look under here, you can see the fold from the other side. Do not want to catch that. So I actually have my finger where that is. So I'm going to actually start. I don't want to catch that fold. So I'm not going to go any closer than this to the center. I'm going to sew a quarter inch of a, with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to sew from that mark down to this very edge down here. I don't know if you'll be able to see the white on white, but I've sewn from that mark, the quarter inch seam allowance, down to that edge. So now we're going to bring the lining to the other side. And we want to stitch the same way the lining 
to the main outside panel together using the same quarter inch seam allowance and if you can't see it I'll mark it this is where my other stitch ends and I want to make sure I know where that fold is and the fold is actually right on the other side right good spot right there so that's a good spot to start actually sewing quarter of an inch from the edge from this seam down to that edge I'm going to sew the lining and the main fabric together I've sewn that as well so now these two this end is sewn together now right at the T nothing overlaps so I'm going to go ahead and actually cut off the zipper tails here and then um, the excess fabric to this tab now I'm going to go ahead and go to the other side and remember it's had it's opened because they have this these ends have not been sewn together yet so I'm going to go ahead and line these up just like I did the other side and sew them together when you're getting ready to sew the side that has the closed end of the zipper you also want to be sure that you're not sewing over that um, when you're sewing on this side stay on this side of the zipper as well so only do that much stitching from the zipper middle to over here all right I have this end closed up as well and I'm going to snip off the rest of this zipper don't need that on there and next we'll just be trimming all the corners making sure you do not cut through your stitching lines all right I've gone ahead and trimmed all my quarters corners and I'm just going to reach in there and grab the opposite corner of the foam side and just start pulling this so that it's right side out I'll come back when I have that pulled out all right once you've turned it out your ends should have a nice curve down the good pinched end there and these are kind of like doing a boxed corner um, when you're making bags so here is our bag so the thing that we need to do first before we do the finishing seam is actually just close the bottom of our lining and I just do that with an eighth of an inch um, I do that an eighth of an inch away from the edge the folded edge but I just you know, finger press those in and I'm just going to sew the opening shut. Alright, once you have that closed up on the bottom, the key now is to get your lining pushed in there, your corners pushed all the way out inside, making sure everything is lying nice and flat. Once you have it laying perfectly flat in there, as flat as you can get it, we're going to zip it up and we're going to do a top stitch now from this top stitch by the zipper I'm going to do mine on the dark fabric side that's the side that I pressed my seam allowance to and I'm going to stitch from that stitch line that's up there an eighth of an inch inside that other stitch line all the way down to the bottom back tacking at the beginning and end of this stitch line and there you have it it's all sewn together zipper open and closes just fine and the compartments look great the linings lying flat we have a completed bag. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and that you get a chance to make a few for the special people in your life for Christmas. I hope everyone is staying well and staying happy. Be sure to take care of yourselves. And until next time, have a great one. Bye for now. <laughs>